Hello and welcome to News 24 on air, our live audio service, Samishal Inzavo. Kiro's Cooper College in North Riding, Johannesburg, obtained a 50% metric pass rate in the 2023 results. Kiro is an independent schools network that owns over 180 schools in South Africa and is considered to be one of the most expensive private schools in the country. Private schools in South Africa fall under the Independent Examinations Board curriculum, which is an Umalusi-approved private assessment body, often considered a better alternative to the government's National Senior Certificate curriculum. Only three metrics from Cooper's College, Cooper College's 23-pupil class managed to attain an admission to a bachelor's degree pass in the school's Cambridge International AS-level exams. To give us the full story, we are joined in studio by News 24's senior education reporter, Prega Govinda. Prega, your reporting has a lot of people worried and talking. Firstly, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Right, let's perhaps look at the 2023 metric pass rate for both NSC, NSC and IEB, which was sitting at 82.9% and 98.46% respectively. Perhaps let's start off with just getting reaction from, you know, various advocacy groups and political parties to the 2023 um, metric results. Yes, uh, thanks once again for the opportunity. Um, You probably know by now that uh, according to the DA, the real metric pass rate is 55.3%. Right. So they base that on... The throughput, you know, the cohort that goes, I mean, that progresses from grade 10 to 12. Mm. And they are looking at a figure of 341,000, you know, who uh, dropped out. But basically, these learners did not, well, uh, some obviously did drop out. Mm -hmm. But there are other reasons for that figure. And one of them is that you will find learners moving into technical and vocational education and training colleges. And the bigger concern is those who are actually retained Mm. in grade 11. Mm. You know, a phenomenon known as gatekeeping. Right. Which uh, some unscrupulous schools use Uh to keep back your weaker learners so that your metric pass rate does not drop. Right. And how Uh, prevalent is this gatekeeping? Yes. uh, Interesting question. Um, In fact, during the the release of the metric results last week, Mm. the Director General, Mr. Matanzi Mamweli, mentioned that, uh, you know, this is partially the reason why we find the huge decline from, uh, in the numbers Mm. From uh, you know between grade ten and eleven, mm. and he and he attributes that partially to schools you know withholding or retaining pupils right, right. who are weaker, you know. Uh-huh. So that's that's one of the reasons for this high number that we uh-huh. have. Right, Prega. Let's talk now about the Independent Examinations Board or the IEB curriculum. Mm-hmm. Could you perhaps take us through what exactly this curriculum is, what it entails, and perhaps also why it's also considered as, I guess, the screen stone of, you know, our basic education system? Yeah, I, I want to start off by, you know, dispelling, you know, this notion that uh, there are two separate curricula. Mm. Basically, you know, the the IEB and... Uh, the IAB is a private assessment body. Right. So too is the Department of Basic Education. And uh, a third body is known as the South African Comprehensive... Uh, uh, sorry, it's the South African Comprehensive Institute. Right, right. So so basically all three uh, assessment bodies set their own exams. Uh-huh. That is where the difference is. Uh the IEB learner and the uh, learner from the government school both, you know, pursue or follow the same curriculum, the CAPS uh-huh. curriculum, uh-huh. the Curriculum and Assessment Policy Statement. No difference in that. 
The only difference lies in the way, uh, in, in the assessment approach uh-huh. and the teaching approach uh-huh. used by, you know, the different schools. So that's uh-huh. basically it. Uh, as far as, um, you know, the issue of, uh, uh, y- y- sorry, you mentioned the... Perhaps why it's considered like this... The green know, stone. The green stone. Mm. Of, yeah. Um, well, w- w- one of the big issues is that, um, or one of the big luxuries, obviously, is the, f- the fact that we have smaller class sizes mm. in your so-called, uh, you know, private schools or independent schools. Mm-hmm. And that's a huge factor. Right. Resources, uh, I mean, private schools are well resourced and uh, have all the facilities that, uh, you know, w- enable pupils to do well, excel ac- academically. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, you wouldn't find that in some of the public schools. Uh-huh. Uh, but as I said, you know, it's, it's just a matter of your teaching approach and your assessment approach you know, in your IEB schools. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. I, think that's I actually want us to talk more about, you know, the size of classrooms in private schools, especially in relation to Cooper College a bit later. Right. But I guess my follow-up question perhaps to us talking about, you know, IEB is that, you know, do we know if it's perhaps guaranteed for pupils to perform better at, you know, an IB school compared to a government or public school? It's, there's no guarantee as such, but uh, I, I think the the uh, IEB results, you know, uh, almost a 99% pass rate uh-huh. and uh, what is it, a bachelor pass rate of, uh, I'm not too sure, but I think it was about... Eighty-eight uh-huh. percent. Um, I think that uh, you're not guaranteed, you know, t- to do uh, well. Uh, I mean, the fact that you have better resources and uh-huh. smaller class sizes and more individual attention. Uh-huh. I mean, those. Um, the, I mean, those are guaranteed to actually deliver. Right. You know. So, in terms of your government schools, you know, your class ratios can go up to one is to forty. Uh-huh. And uh, it does become a little more challenging, especially the more less resource schools, right. you know. Mm. So right. now let's come to Cooper College, where nearly half of the matric pupils failed their Cambridge International AS level exams. Could you perhaps explain to us what exactly these um, AS level exams are, and also perhaps you know what benefit do they um you know have to offer you know um benefits rather you know perspective or students a perspective career growth yes um the cambridge international as level and a level if you take the cambridge international as level for example uh, th- that's a one year program um I'm, I'm, I'm not to a fair with it, uh-huh. but I do know that it is equivalent to your grade 12 in South Africa. Uh-huh. And uh, it's widely regarded as being a qualification that gives you easier access to universities in South Africa and abroad. Uh-huh. You know, they often talk about it as being the gold standard for international study, uh-huh. you know. And uh, it sort of, you know, looks at very high order thinking skills and challenges learners. I mean, that's not to say that the NSC and the IEB doesn't, you know. Uh. But uh, it's a qualification that's widely regarded abroad. Uh. And uh, I suppose that's the reason why quite a number of local uh, learners are taking the IEB, I mean, the Cambridge qualification. Mm -hmm. So now... The question, Prager, is, you know, if 11 pupils in a class of 23, right, which is a very small class, um, failed, is it then really a problem? But I guess also the reality would then be the smaller the class, the, sig- the significantly impactful, you know, the fail becomes, correct? Uh, 
Yes. Um, I mean, we, we've got 11 out of 23 candidates mm. who fail the AS level exams. Uh, I think that's, that's quite concerning. Mm. Uh, the, the fact is we've got a class of 23. So one would expect more individual attention, mm. number one. And, uh, you know, it stands to reason that more pupils ought to succeed. Mm. and pass. Mm. In fact, it's not only my concern, but the concern from Kuro itself. So Kuro regards uh, Cooper College as one of its 15 Kuro select schools, Mm. basically. It's an acquisition school. And uh, Kuro, you know, to their credit, you know, put out a statement, you know, saying that... uh, you know, we are going to be conducting a detailed audit of the results mm. at Cooper College. And we will also be looking at, you know, launching a program to recruit experienced staff with more specialist knowledge in, uh, you know, the Cambridge curriculum in key subjects. Mm. Mm. I think they should be applauded for that. Uh I've spoken to many parents. In fact, the common thread there was that uh, we are worried because we have brought this to the attention of the school as as early as June last year. Mm -hmm. In fact, this is the time when a group of parents approached the school after being alerted to the fact that, you know, they had no teacher for biology and no teacher for maths. Mm for, you know, at different intervals. And uh, they were promised that this issue would be addressed. But uh, they indicated uh, that, you know, by September, early October, uh, uh, only 60% of the curriculum had been covered. So this Mm. was a huge concern as well. So essentially the parents had been monitoring their children's progress throughout the year. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And uh, one of them even indicated to me that, you know what, my my child was a brilliant, you know, pupil in grade 11, Mm. you know, getting distinctions for virtually every subject. But But he was very disappointed, you know, to find out that his child had now failed Mm. and Mm. was among the 11 who had failed. Right. Right. the, situ- the situation is serious uh, because parents have indicated to us that you know Cooper College had offered free tuition mm. to those learners who failed, mm. and uh, also offered them transport, you know, f- over Saturdays, you know, to a school in Pretoria for extra tuition. Right, and we also find that. Uh, there's, there will be a meeting of parents with the school to discuss, you know, the 2023 results. Mm, mm. And uh, parents are optimistic that uh, a way forward, you know, would be charted. Right, right. And finally, Prega, before I let you go, you know, I think as someone who's perhaps also, you know, extensively reported on the education beat, it's, you know, you probably are familiar with the conversation that always pops up around, you know, yes. creating, I guess, rather this unified edu- education curriculum in schools. And, you know, as someone who has been reporting on education, you know, for a very long time, does it sound like something that's feasible to you? Sorry, what, what, what are you referring to? Are you referring to so the perhaps, previous call um, for the single... Exam. Um, he, he probably would be an added voice mm-hmm. to that, but I think you know every year. I think even, even in my metric year, you know, there's always been that conversation of perhaps why is there a separate curriculum? Why is there IEB? Why is there NSC? Why can't we just have one unified curriculum for all students? So then, I guess the question is: Does it sound like something that's feasible and doable? I I wonder. You know, uh, we've got as I mentioned earlier, on one curriculum, mm. followed by the entire country. Uh, it's, it's just, as I said earlier on, you know, a matter of 
the teaching approach and the assessment approach. Right. And uh, I mean, you will always find that those parents who can afford would want to send their children, you know, to schools where there are smaller cl- classes, mm-hmm. better facilities, you know, uh, more. Uh, uh, I mean experienced teachers and so on so you know it's i i would say that while it's a good thing i mean there's freedom of choice you know mm. and parents can you know decide what's best for their children mm. right prega governor senior education reporter at news 24 to read the full story do visit news24.com That's all we have for now. Until next time, I'm Michelin Sabo.